بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد continue reading the chapter the author he mentioned باب ذكر الرياء والسمعة the chapter with regards to mentioning the affairs of of showing off of showing off in worship and wanting to be heard and wanting to be heard. We have seen in the previous class that what, what is intended from this is that a person, he will do an action of worship and he'll perform it in a good manner. And uh, the reason in his heart that he's performing it and what he is hoping for is the praise of the people. Is the praise of the people or a status with the people or position in the heart of the people. Uh, and the likes like this. So the one who displays his actions of worship, whether they are actions or whether they are statements, and he has this intention here, to be seen by the people, to gain praise from them, or rank from them, or position from them, then this is what this chapter is discussing. Then this is what the author is clarifying that is a major sin, from the diseases of the heart. From the diseases of the heart. But something that should be taken note uh, with, this, with this issue is that if a person who were to, he were to display his actions if a person he were to display his actions and to make them seen intentionally or to make them heard his statements to make them heard intentionally but his intention is not it's not to show off or to have rank or position with the people or to gain praise from them rather he has another intention for example like to teach the people for example like to teach the people then this will not be included here in this chapter or if he had another intention, he had another intention, he is displaying his action of worship. It, it can be seen or it can be heard, and he makes it seen and heard intentionally. But he has the intention for the people to follow him in that, either to teach them or, or to follow them. So it, it will either, either be for ta'lim or al iqtida. At this time, it's not considered, it's not considered riya, and it's not considered sum'a, and this is a legislative action and it's good. So the one, who sometimes he would teach the people. Sometimes he would teach the people by his actions, or he would teach the people by his statements, and he would let them see him, and he would let them hear, hear him in order for them to learn from him. And this has been narrated from, uh, from the Salaf, and even from Ibn Mas'ud, radiallahu anhu. It's mentioned that sometimes he used to pray the night prayer in the masjid. He used to pray the night prayer in the masjid at times, and he would recite out loud, and he would stand and he would pray. Indeed, for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. But he would display this action of worship so that his students could follow him and see him. And so that the people will follow him and take him as a role model and learn from him. And take his manners and his conduct as, and conduct as a way. So this is a good way. And this is a good action. And likewise, it has been narrated from Umar, radiallahu anhu, with regards to dua al-istiftah. And we have seen that, that he would... Uh, for some time he would recite it out loud. And it's known that dua al-istiftah, the opening supplication after the takbir, before the recitation of the Fatiha is silent. But he would say it out loud. He would say it out loud and make the people hear him with the intention of them learning the supplication. And that they, they can learn that he's reciting here and they can memorize the supplication that he's reciting. So at this time it's not considered riya. And it's not considered a sum'a. He's not showing off or wanting to be heard with a foul intention, hoping for praise from the people or position or rank with the people. Rather, he's hoping good for them and for them to learn from him and to take him as a role model. Likewise, we have seen an example of this with regards to a sunan al rawatib and the hadith of Maymuna, radiallahu anha, in Sahih Muslim, and that she mentioned them in Salah, thintay ashrata rakatan fi yawmin wa layla, buniya lahu bihinna baytun fil jannah, buniya lahu bihinna, Baytun fil Jannah, that whoever prays 12 non obligatory prayers in, in one day and one night, a house in paradise will be built for him. And uh, the times of these prayers, coupled with the obligatory prayers, are known. And we discussed this affair, alhamdulillah. But in this narration, the one who is narrating on Maymuna, radiallahu anha, is her brother. And he said that Maymuna, his sister, radiallahu anha, told him this narration. And after that, she said to him, I never left these 12 ever since I heard this from the Messenger of Allah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So she's not bragging or showing off. She's saying this to inform her brother of the diligence uh, that she had learned from the Messenger. That we learn these narrations and we apply them. That we learn these narrations and we have knowledge and then we apply them with application and uh, with sincerity. 
And like this, after that, his, uh, uh, after that her, her brother as well, he mentioned the same thing too, to his student, and then to his student. And it's mentioned that all of them, they said the same thing, that ever since I heard this from the brother of Maimuna, I never left him. And his student, ever since I heard this from so-and-so, I never left him. So this was a means and to inform the people of this good deed that they had performed, uh, the diligence of applying this knowledge, and they benefit from that. And this is not considered showing off. This is not considered showing off. So this is something that is recommended for the one who is safe from Riyya, and he has a good intention. And he's also safe from falling into self-amazement and the likes like this. And then he would, sometimes he would display his actions and for the people to, to see him in order to learn from him or in order to follow. And likewise, the statements. And we mentioned an example yesterday of somebody who will make the adhkar and he will raise his voice with that. And he has the intention to be heard. So that the people will say, oh, mashallah, he, he memorized the adhkar, or he knows so, he has learned so much, or he recites so clearly, or this, or that, or this, or that, or he is somebody who always remembers Allah and makes the adhkar at this time and at that time. And he, this is what's in his heart, and that's what he's hoping for. But if somebody who raised his voice with that because it's sunnah, or raised his voice with that to teach another person, for example, for them to hear him, and the likes like this, and this is a good intention, and this is not included in this chapter, and this is not showing off. For example, somebody, maybe he's sitting in the ranks after the prayer, and he will find somebody close to him, somebody near him who has just prayed with him, and he's making the athkar in the wrong manner. Maybe he's saying, subhanallah, 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 alhamdulillah, 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 alhamdulillah. And he's saying them real fast and just going through them without even recollecting or even pronouncing the words properly. So the brother, he will look at the situation and have pity on that man. And then and maybe he will tell him directly, brother, that's not the proper way. Or he can show him by example. And he can sit there and say it, uh, raise his voice to the, so the man can hear it. Alhamdulillah, 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 subhanallah. So like this, and make it clear, make it slow, do it properly, do it good, so he hears. So he'll learn from that. So he will see at this time, he will look at me, subhanallah, subhanallah. And he'll look at him, subhanallah, subhanallah. And the, and the difference between the two. And inshallah, if Allah wants good for him, he will recognize that and he will correct his own soul. He will correct his own situation and self without anybody having to tell him directly. And this is a good way to teach. This is a good way to teach. And, and, and the life's like this. So the point here and in the beginning of this lesson is to take this uh, reminder. Uh, not every time somebody shows his actions or he makes his statements heard or he speaks about his deeds is always considered from this aspect of showing off. And wanting to be heard, but brother, there are exemptions to that. But this is still a dangerous of affair. This is still a dangerous affair, and a believer he would not make that his his any you know, way that he does all the time. But if he finds the opportunity, he can teach somebody by action and statement, or he can mention some good that he's on, so that somebody could follow him in that. Then he would do that. Then he would do that, and this is not considered showing off. So the author he's mentioning this affair, and he began with that verse in Surah Al-Kaf, the last verse of Surah in Surah Al-Kaf. And we read in our previous class, you need to clarify and to remind a person that the one who's hoping for the hereafter, the one who's hoping for the meaning of Allah, which there is no doubt about, and everybody he will meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then the one who is uh, remembering this and he's hoping for that and is afraid of the meaning and he's hoping for the pleasure and the mercy of Allah, then let him write his deeds. Then let him work righteous deeds. And we have seen in the previous class that the righteous deed is the deed that collects or it contains two major affairs. And that is that it is in accordance to the sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, outwardly. And likewise, it is done sincerely and purely for the sake of Allah Azzawajal, inwardly. And this affair is emphasized in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِعِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحَدًا And let him not associate any partners whatsoever. Whatsoever. No major partners and no minor partners. And he wanted to be seen or heard and showing off with the actions of the hereafter. Let him not associate any partners whatsoever in any actions of the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore the author, he's reminding us of, of this affair and fulfilling the requirements and actualizing the statement, in this manner. And then he's mentioning the dangers of those who learn the legal ways of the Prophet and those who learn the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam diligently. Yani the, the outward appearance of the action. Because the action it has two appearances or it has two forms. An outward form and an inward form. An outward actions, the outward and apparent actions, and likewise inside the heart there are actions. Both of them have to be in accordance to the legislation. This is what the author he is indicating here. 
And then he is uh, clarifying the dangers here of the one who shows off. And he meaning that he will learn the outward appearance of the actions. He will learn how to perform them outwardly in, in a good manner, and he will perfect that. But inwardly, he's corrupted. But inwardly, he's corrupted. That it will not be accepted from Allah Azza wa Jal. It will not be accepted from Allah Azza wa Jal until it is correct. The action is correct outwardly and inwardly. Outwardly and inwardly. So with regards to the outward affair, the author, he mentioned the narration of Jundub ibn Abdullah. We read it in our previous class. That whoever does a deed and wants to be heard, then Allah will expose him. And whoever shows off and he performs an action for the people, then Allah will expose him. And he And uh, the affairs with regards to this uh, have proceeded. This is clarifying the outward action. And he, the one who does the, the action outwardly, but inwardly, he does it wanting to be seen, then it will be it will be uh, accepted and it will be a means for his exposure and failure. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be angry with this, in, this individual. And this is from the worst of the affairs. To do the deeds of the hereafter, hoping for the reward from the people and hoping for the praise and the status and position with the people and hoping to turn the faces of the people and leaving off the face of the creator of the people, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the issue here. After this, the author, again, he is uh, mentioning now the clarification of that and the details of that because this person who made a sum'a or this person who made a ria, maybe he did the action properly maybe he did it good outwardly but he should not neglect or forget about the inside affair therefore he mentioned now and he says وَلَهُمَا عَنْ عُمَرَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمَا أَنَّهُ قَالْ قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ إِنَّمَا الْعَمَالُ بِالنِّيَّاتِ وَإِنَّمَا لِكُلِ مْرِئٍ مَنَوَى he mentioned the famous narration of Umar the hadith and niyyah, the narration about the intention. The author, he says, وَلَهُمَا Any meaning also in uh, Bukhari and, and Muslim from the hadith of Umar. Radiyallahu anhu, that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, إِنَّمَا الْعَمَالُ بِالنِّيَّاتِ That verily the deeds are by way of the intentions. They're by way of the intentions. Yani whether they're accepted, whether they're good, whether they're corrupted and rejected, uh, the, it's by way of the intention yani The action, it has an inward appearance And it has a condition with regards to the heart And that is, it must be a, In accordance for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. And it must be yani, Done sincerely and purely for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. And then he said Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Wa inna ma imri'in ma nawa And every individual He will have what he had intended Every individual, he will have what he intended And he will get what he wanted If he intended the praise of the people, then uh, possibly Allah will guide them to praise him and possibly not. But in any case, this is what he's hoping for and this is what he will get. And if he is hoping for the reward from Allah Azza wa Jal and acceptance from his Lord, subhanahu wa ta'ala in his mercy and his pleasure, then he will have that. Then he will have that. So this is something that the author is clarifying and reminding. The outward affair, yes, it has to be in accordance to the sunnah. But likewise, the inward affair, it has to be purely and solely for the sake of Allah. And solely for the sake of Allah. As for the one who perfected it outwardly, but he showed off inwardly, and his heart is hoping, and in his heart, his heart is attached to the people, and he did it to be seen and to be heard, then Allah will expose him. What is an example of the exposure? The author, he says, what a Muslim in Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu. And likewise, it has come in from the narration of Adima Muslim, from the hadith of Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu marfu'a, meaning it's ascribed to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Inna awwal al-nasi yuqba alayhi yawm al-qiyamati thalatha. Thalatha. That verily the first of the people to be held accountable on the day of resurrection, three. Three. It's also been mentioned uh, the, they're the first ones that the fire, the fire will be ignited by way of them. The first ones for the fire to be ignited with. The fire will be set ablaze with these people. billah. Three. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned the first one. Rajulun istushhida fi sabirillah. The man who was uh, killed as a martyr. Ustushhida, and he mata shahida. Mata shahida fi al Meaning he died as a shaheed. And this is any, according to what is apparent to the people. According to what is apparent to the people, that this person, he went out with jihad, with the imam, and behind the flag and the banner of the imam and the legislative jihad, and he died in that. And he died in that. But what happened to him? He says, فَأُوتِيَ بِهِ فَعَرَّفَهُ 
ni'matahu fa'arafaha and he was brought meaning he'll be brought on the day of resurrection and he will be uh, known he will, the, the, the blessings of Allah will be, known, be made known to him and he will confess to them and he will confess to them and wallahu alam the blessings of Allah here uh, specific with regards to this affair meaning the blessings of Allah that he was given success to go to jihad and that he was given health and strength and he had weapons and he had provision and he was uh, set on that path and everything was facilitated to him to meet the enemy in this manner and he was uh, from those who were given success to go on that path with strength and with, en with energy and with ability and the likes like this and he was given success for this and he confessed to them he said, what did you do with those blessings? What did you do with those blessings? And what did you do with that strength and that energy and that wealth that you had? And the likes like this. قَالَ قَاتَلْتُ فِي سَبِيلِكَ حَتَّى قُتِلْتُ حَتَّى قُتِلْتُ And he قَاتَلْتُ فِي سَبِيلِكَ And so in the narration in Muslim, قَاتَلْتُ فِيكَ حَتَّى أُسْتُشْهِدْتُ And he حَتَّى قُتِلْتُ And he said, I fought in your path. I fought in your path. In the narration, the Muslim قاتل توفيك. I I I I fought for your sake, meaning hoping for your pleasure and seeking your reward. That's what he says. That's what he says. What did you do with those bounties and blessings? He said, I fought in your path, meaning hoping for your pleasure and seeking your reward until I was until I died and and had to ustushidu until I until I died as a martyr, and in that path, قال Kadabta. Allah he says, You lied. You, you, you lied. Kadabta. In uh, in the narration in the Tirmidhi, Waqal al Malaika Tulahu Kadabta. And also the angels say to him as well, You lied. Allah he says you lied, and then also the angels they say to him, uh, you lied. Walakinaka katelta li yuqal huwa jari fakatil. He said, But rather you fought so that it will be said. Verily, he's brave. Yani, so that the people will speak about his bravery. So that the people will say, Huwa jari, yani shuja, shuja, that he is a person uh, uh, of jara, and he, and he has a jura, and he's, he, he's, uh, he, he's brave, and he's not afraid, and he's not a coward. He, he said, you fought for this reason. You didn't fight for my pleasure and seeking my reward, but rather you fought so that it will be said that he's brave. He's brave. وقاتيل. And it was said, and it was said, and this is going back to that statement. And this is what he this is what he intended. He, he intended for the people to praise him. And he got that. Now what is his outcome? فَأُمِرَابِهِ He will be, he will be commanded. Yani, meaning the, the angels will be commanded to take him. فَسُحِبَ عَلَى وَجْهِهِ He will be drawn on his face. Meaning the angels will drag him on his face. حَتَّى أُرْقِيَ فِي النَّارِ Until he's cast into the hellfire. Meaning the angels, they will take him at this time and they will drag him on his face and cast him in the fire. And cast him in the fire. But we pay attention to these actions. This person, he gave his life. This, this person, he gave his life. He's fighting a, in a battle with the weapon against disbelievers behind the banner of an imam, a hakim, a Muslim, with the Muslimin. They got ranks and they got rows. And, and, the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the lions are meeting. And the battle is, and the dust is flying and the swords are, are, are meeting. And the likes like this until he died. Until he died. And the people that see this, Allahu Akbar, they will say, this is a great action. But here this person, he, and he, even though he performed the outward action all the way until his soul left his body. All the way until his soul left his body because of his intention. Because of his intention was corrupted in this manner, it has no benefit for him. It has no benefit for him. Rather, it brings him disgrace and punishment and the anger of Allah Azza wa Jal. And he's being the, disgraced here. Here he's being held accountable. What did you do with those blessings? I fought on your path. I fought on your path, seeking your pleasure and your reward, liar. Kedabta, you're a liar. You're a liar. The angels testify against him like Kedabta, you lied. And then he's exposed. Rather, what was in your heart is this secret right here. You were you were burying the secret in your heart. You wanted to be known. You know you wanted to be you wanted to be called that you're brave and the likes like this. And he's exposed in this manner on uh, the greatest day, on Yom Qiyamah. So this is something that is dangerous. This is a, a great reminder for a believer. 
He says, uh, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa rajulun ta'allama al-ilma, wa allamahu, wa qara'a al-Qur'ana, fa'utiya bihi, fa'arrafahu ni'amahu, fa'arrafaha. Qala fama amilta fiha. And another man, there's another man, there's three of them. And, he, and what is intended, by the way, is not three individuals, three people. So-and-so, the son of so-and-so, but three types of people. Three types of people. So anybody who has these traits and they die in that manner, they have this fate and this outcome in the hereafter. It's not talking about three individuals, whether three types of people that have these characteristics. The first one, he was fighting in jihad. He was fighting in jihad, the true jihad. Behind the imam, the legislated jihad with an intention that is corrupted, hoping for the praise of the people, that it will be said that he's brave. The second man, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, the man who learned knowledge. And he learned knowledge. He sought knowledge and he taught it. And he meaning that he learned the knowledge, he was a student of knowledge and he reached a level until he's able to teach now. And so he's seeking knowledge. And it's likewise a type of jihad and striving and much effort to seek knowledge and to teach knowledge. And he recited the Quran. And so he's somebody who learned the knowledge of the legislation, the Quran and the Sunnah, and uh, the legislated rulings and the likes like that. And he taught that. And he was somebody who was diligent with the Quran. A memorizer of the Quran and reciter of the Quran, he will be brought likewise, and the blessings of Allah Azawajal will be displayed to him, and he'll be, and he will know, he, he will know them and recognize them, and confess to them, and confess to them, and the blessing that it was made easy for him to go on the path of knowledge and to memorize and to learn and to have a benefit from the people of knowledge and so on and so forth, and then to have students to teach and then to recite the Quran. He's given success to this. He's given success to do this. This is a blessing from Allah. This is a favor from Allah that Allah selected him to be from those who learn, to be from those who teach, to be from those who recite. And Allah selected the previous one likewise to be from those who fight and take up the arms in the path of Allah So this is a favor from Allah And then Allah, he says, so what did you do with it? What, how did you apply those blessings? And if ma amilta fiha. The man, he says, he said, I learned the knowledge and I taught it and I recited the Quran for your sake. For your sake, meaning me seeking your pleasure and hoping for your reward. Seeking your pleasure and hoping for your reward. Again, what does it go back to? The heart is connected and he's seeking your pleasure, hoping for your reward. Where's that at? It's in the heart. It's in the heart. The man's heart, he's saying that this is how he did it. He, he, he's, uh, uh, th- this is uh, a great praise. Uh, subhanAllah. He said, uh, Allah, he says, you lied. In the, in the, in the, in the riwayah of Itirmidhi, likewise, uh, The angels, they say, likewise, you lied. He said, but brother, you learned so that it will be said he's knowledgeable, he's a scholar. And you recited in order for it to be said he's a reciter. And he, this is what he's looking for, praises from the people. Oh, he's so knowledgeable. Oh, he, he's this and that. He's a, the best reciter. Oh, he memorized such and such. And he faqat qil. This is what he got. This is what he's hoping for. This is what he intended. This is why he did those actions. And it was mentioned for him. And he got what he's looking for. He got what he's looking for. So it will be commanded. And the angels will take him. The angels will be commanded. And he'll be dragged on his face. And he'll be cast into the hellfire. And he'll be cast into the hellfire. And then after this, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned, And another man, the third man, that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has given him prosperity. And he has given him all different types of, of wealth. Not only money, all different types of wealth. And he has given him prosperity. Given him prosperity. And all different types of wealth. And the same thing occurred. He is brought. And the blessings are, are made known to him. And the blessings of this wealth. And the likes like this. And the wealth that he had. And the provision that he has given. And that he was selected and chosen. Allah blessed him with. As a favor from him. And he confesses to that. So what did you do with him? And how did you apply them and use those blessings? He said, I did not leave any path, any avenue that you love to be spent in, except I spent in that path for your sake. 
except I spent in that path for your sake. Any meaning? Seeking your pleasure, seeking your pleasure, and hoping for your reward. So, قال الله, Allah, He says, كذبت, كذبت. Same thing in the riwayah of At-Tirmidhi, وقال الملائكة له كذبت. And the angels, they say to him, Verily you lied. لكنك فعلت ليقال هو جواد فقد قيل But rather you did all of that. All of that spending and the likes like this. All of that you did it so that it would be said he's generous. He's generous. جواد and كريم That he's generous and he has so much generosity and kindness. And, and the likes like this فقد قيل And that was mentioned. And that was said about you. ثم أمر به فسحب على وجهه حتى أوقي في النار and he will be commanded and he will be drawn on his face until he is casted into the hellfire. Until he is casted in, in the hellfire. The author, he says, What did Tirmidhi? Fihi anna Mu'awiyata radiyallahu anhu lamma sami'ahu baka. It's mentioned in the, in the narration of Tirmidhi rahimahullah that uh, this narration was mentioned to Mu'awiyah radiyallahu anhu and whenever he heard it, he cried. وَتَالَ قَوْلَهُ And at this time, and he heard this narration, and then he cried, and then he recited the statement of Allah the Most High. مَنْ كَانَ يُرِيدُ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا وَزِينَتَهَا نُوَفِّي إِلَيْهِمْ أَعْمَالَهُمْ فِيهَا And the author, he says that ayat, and until the end of the verses. And uh, the verses continue, وَهُمْ فِيهَا لَا يُبْخَصُونَ أُولَئِكَ الَّذِينَ لَيْسَ لَهُمْ فِي الْآخِرَاتِ إِلَّا النَّارِ وَحَبِطَ مَا صَنَعُوا فِيهَا وَبَاطِلُ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ he recited the verse of Allah Azza wa Jal after hearing this narration. He cried, Radiallahu anhu, and then he recited the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal, the meaning of which is as that those who want this worldly life and the glitter therein. And this is what they seek only. Their whole aim and intention is the worldly life. Is the worldly life. And the glitter of this worldly life, then we will give them their deeds, the actions that they work for, and the deeds that they do, we will recompense them in this life, and they will not be shortened. They will not be shortened. And what they are hoping for and what they are working for, they will give their deeds. And they will not be, be shortened. These, they are the ones who have nothing in the, in the hereafter except for fire. These people here, they are the ones who have nothing in the, in the hereafter except for fire. And everything that they have done in this life will be invalidated. And uh, their actions, all of them will be in vain. And they will have no benefit. They will have no benefit from their deeds in the hereafter. So this is the, this is the issue. A person, if he works for the dunya, for the dunya, and if, for example, he seeks knowledge uh, 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 of mechanics or knowledge of IT in order to have a good job and to work in a field that is legal, and, 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 or he learns management in order to start his own business, to work in a field and to earn money that's halal and good for him, this is all good for him, and he's allowed to do that, and he'll learn this knowledge for the dunya. And there's no blame on him for that. But whenever this person here, he worships Allah, that's not for the dunya, that's for the hereafter. So a uh, believer, he'll separate between the two. What he does for the dunya, that's for the dunya. That's for the dunya. Alhamdulillah, there's no blame in that. He can get money for the dunya to have a nice house, to have nice clothes, to have nice... And he, he wants to get a good job. He doesn't want to suffice and just be a, a regular worker. Rather, he wants to have a high-paying job. He can work for that and strive for that in this life, in the limits of the legislation. And there's no blame on him. There's no blame, if, as long as he does not transgress the limits and he stays in the haram, there's no blame on him. It's good for him to work for that, for his dunya. It's okay, and there's no blame. But as for the actions of the hereafter, they're for Allah. And there cannot be any hope for anything from this life for the actions of the hereafter. And the one who's truly given success, then he will turn the actions of the dunya into the actions of the hereafter with a beautiful intention. With a beautiful intention. But the point is that a believer, he will not mix the two. If a person, he were to do the actions of the dunya for the dunya, and then after that, he does the actions of the hereafter for the dunya. SubhanAllah. This is the recompense of that person. This is the recompense of that person. He does the deeds of the, of the dunya for the dunya. And he does the deeds of the hereafter for the dunya. This person, he has no portion in the hereafter. The only thing he has in the hereafter is, is the fire. These are the people that have nothing in the hereafter. They didn't work for the hereafter whatsoever. So this is something that is very dangerous. That this intention could enter into the heart. And it could corrupt a person. And this is the understanding of Muawiyah radiallahu anhu, how yani, this affair could come to this extent. How this affair could uh, come to this extent. So we see that uh, this narration and the narrations that have proceeded uh, and the verse that the author, he mentioned, uh, rahimahullahu ta'ala, clarify the danger of uh, riya and sum'a. And uh, this is contrary to iyak and abudu entirely. And a believer, whenever he finds that uh, in his heart, he will, he will fight against that. And shaitan, he will come and whisper. 
Shaitan, he will come and whisper it, but at this time he has to make what he can stain and seek the aid and the help of Allah Azza wa Jalla and take the means. And whenever he notices it coming to his heart, that his heart is leaning or inclining to a person while he's doing an action of worship or to the, or to the people or for something from the dunya, that he will fight that. That he will fight that eagerly and diligently. And he will not just let it go. He will not just let it go. Rather, he will fight that. And he will take the legislative means by remembering Allah and saying, A'udhu Billah, A'udhu Billah. And likewise, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned a supplication that if one were to say it, ذَهَبَ عَنْهُ قَلِيلُ أَشِرْهِ وَكَثِيرُهُ The one who men- he mentions this, uh, this supplication that the minor, shir- minor shirk and major shirk, it will all go away. It will all go away if he says it. And if the one who knows what it means and he says it, and, he, and this has been narrated authentically from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he is afraid of the shirk, uh, of minor shirk, shirk al-asghar, and uh, the means to be safe from that is to seek refuge with Allah. Is to seek refuge with Allah. Who knows the supplication? Uh-huh. 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 No. Uh-huh. 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 I seek refuge with you, that I would associate partners with you while I know. And I seek forgiveness for you from that which I do not know. From that which I do not know. It's mentioned uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam whenever this wording came. Uh, whenever the supplication came, it came in, in, in two different narrations. One of them, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he told his, compa- his companions, Inna shirka la fikum akhfa min dabib al namil. Inna shirka fikum la akhfa min dabib al namil. That very shirk amongst you is more hidden than the crawling of an ant. It's more hidden than the crawling of an ant. Yani, the crawling of an ant. We know an ant, huh? Maybe some, maybe right now some, there's an ant crawling somewhere and, and we would not even know it. And after pondering over this narration and listening to its explanation from the people of knowledge, I, I myself, been more than one time I've been sitting on the road and I'll see an ant crawling on somebody. I'll be like, subhanAllah. You, you'll find it. You'll, you'll see it sometimes. You'll be around and, and there's nothing around. And you'll look. There's, you'll never even know it's there. He's there. The ant is there. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is making this comparison. Like right now, if there's an ant behind me, behind you, next to you, you don't know it. You don't see it. And, unless you're guided to look at it in detail. Then you, you make effort and then you look down. And now it becomes clear. And if this is the reality of shirk. You'll never find it. Except when? Ah. This shirk here, except when you make effort, you have to look for it, you have to make taftish, you have to search in your heart. This, this right here, this riya right here, maybe, maybe somebody would do it and not even know. And I seek refuge for that which I don't even know. Meaning somebody, he, could hope, he can do a deed from the hereafter and his whole heart is hoping for the, the praise of the people and he is so heedless, he doesn't even realize it. He's so heedless, he doesn't even realize it. Even he can become accustomed to that. And then he's heedless and he doesn't even realize it. And in reality, he's hoping for something from the dunya. He's praying, he's seeking knowledge, he's making up God, he's doing this and he's doing that. He, he's memorizing, he's learning, he's speaking, he's talking. All of these affairs, and, he, uh, and he's shaitan, he's diligent to mislead the people. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that shirk is like, is like this. And, he, and uh, it's more hidden than, uh, than the crawling of an ant. So that means that a believer, he has to be sincere with Allah. And he has to search for it. He has to look in his heart. And look into his reality and try to find it. What is shirk as going? What are the aspects of that? How can it occur? How can it happen? And the lights like this. And then he'll be sincere with himself. And he'll be sincere with himself and say, A'udhu Billah. And any time he starts to find it, the one who starts to look for it, he'll start to find it. The one who starts to look for it, bi ta'ala, and then he'll start to find it and see it. Coming up when he's talking, coming up whenever he's speaking, coming up whenever he's praying, he'll feel it arising in his heart. And now he will be able to repel it. Because he's aware of it, say, billah, a'udhu billah. And he will seek refuge with Allah Azza wa Jal, and he will make that supplication immediately. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika an ushrika bika wa na alam, wa astaghfiruka lima la alam. Oh Allah, I seek refuge with you from associating partners with you while, while I know. And any partner, this is for riya, this is for showing off. And this is considered shirk. And I seek, and I seek your forgiveness from that which, from that which I do not, I do not know. So the issue of, uh, of shirk and, and riya and uh, the opposite of that is al-ikhlas and purity of intention is a major affair. 
and the Salaf, they used to speak about uh, these issues. We have some, uh, some narrations yani, from the Salaf, uh, Salaf al-Salih, what they have mentioned about this. And we see these actions here. Yani, this person here, the first one, what was he? He was fighting in the path of Allah until he lost his soul and he died. But he wanted to be known as a brave person. He wanted to be praised with bravery. The other one, he is striving in the path of Allah likewise, seeking knowledge and learning and memorizing and reciting the Quran. But he wants to be known as a scholar and be praised for his knowledge and for his recitation. The other person, he has lots of wealth and he's spending and he's generous, giving his money away. And the people, they love money. The soul, they loves money. But here this man, what is he doing? Every avenue of Allah, of khair and of good, he's spending his money here and there, here and there, and giving his money left and right like this, letting it go. But not for the sake of Allah, but rather hoping for the praise from the people that is mentioned that he's generous. That is mentioned that he's generous. These three, uh, these three actions specifically, they have a great rank and they're highly, uh, they're highly praiseworthy. And Allah has praised them and encouraged them in the Quran and in the Sunnah of the Prophet. And these actions here are from the greatest of, of deeds. And from the best of the deeds to draw near to Allah and to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to seek his favor and to seek his blessing and to seek his mercy by striving and fighting with the weapon against the enemies of Allah in the legislated jihad and by striving with one's soul and one's wealth and learning the legislation of Allah and teaching it and defending it and reciting the book of Allah striving in this manner like this this is a great great deed very praiseworthy from the best of all deeds and the people of jihad the shuhada and the people uh the ulama they have the highest rank they have from the highest rank of the people they have from the highest rank of the people and not and not lower than them likewise the people who, who spend their wealth the the the, the prophet sallallahu he said the people of wealth and prosperity they, they they took off and ran away with all of the reward and because of the great reward that one has for this. So these actions here, they are great deeds. But whenever these people, they did these actions in this manner, outwardly, outwardly for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jalla, and inwardly they had this filthy and disgusting desire. And all they wanted from that is for somebody to praise them or to like them or to give them his position or rank and status in their lives like this. Uh, now this is a great crime. And now for this, they're displayed and they're exposed and, the, and they're and, and they punished. And the fire is lit with them and ignited with them because of the great crime that they have by belittling this legislation al jihad fi sabilillah bisayfi and with the, with the sword wa bil qalami and with the pen and the likes wa bil lisan with the tongue and the likes and with the wealth spending all of this is from the best of the deeds and they belittled that and they had no concern for that and they used that and they stepped on that and they stepped on that to have status and rank and to have a lofty status in this. In this life, waliyadu billah. So for this reason, uh, Allah He began with them. Allah, Allah, Allah He began with them. Waliyadu billah. The poet he mentioned, "Wa'adi mu lam yamalan bi ilmihi mu'adzabu min qabri ubad al wathani." That the scholar who did not work by way of his knowledge, then he will be punished even before the worshippers of idols, even before the worshippers of idols. And in the first knowledge that a student or a scholar he will work with is al ikhlas, wa tawhid. The first thing he would learn that all of these actions they have to be for the sake of Allah and that, that this uh, affair belongs to Allah and that we are returning to Allah. So the one who remembers this, you know, he will be able to, 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 to free himself from that. But if he's overcome by his miserable whims in this manner like this, then this is his outcome. Billah. Ibn Mubarak, rahimahullah ta'ala, he says, Rubba amalin sahirin tu azimuhu niyya wa rubba amalin kabirin tu sahiruhu niyya. This is the example of that. That possibly there will be a, a small deed. A small deed. And the intention will magnify that. The intention will magnify that. Maybe somebody will give a dollar. Sincerely for the sake of Allah. And, he, and really hoping good. Maybe he only has five too. But he gives one of them. And he, for the sake of Allah. And he have a great reward because of his intention. And maybe somebody who do a huge deed. Like these three here. But that will be belittled because of his intention. What he ever been that. So the intention has a great affair in the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A very, very important and dangerous issue. The intention in the heart of a believer. And uh, we see in this reason the author, he is uh, giving sincere advice. And he, by beginning with the sins of the heart in this work, and he, the major sins, beginning with the heart. Because if that is rectified, bi'idnillahi ta'ala, then the rest of the affair will be upright. The tongue and the body parts and the hands 
will all be upright by rectifying, by rectifying the heart. Many times a believer, all he needs is to be reminded. All he needs is, is to hear a reminder and an admonition. And he will benefit from that in a great manner and rectify much of his affair by the permission of Allah. So he said, Rahimahullah ta'ala, Abdullah ibn al Mubarak, he died in year 181. And he's just to ponder over these words and to think about them that maybe a small deed will be magnified because of the intention. And maybe a major deed will be belittled and considered insignificant because of, of the intention. Because of the intention. Likewise, it's been mentioned from uh, Al Fulayyad ibn Ayyad. Rahimahullah ta'ala, he died in the year 187. He said, Inna ma wa That Allah, He only wants from you your intention and your desire, the hope that you have in your heart. And he, not, not, not meaning that you know, the action should not be performed properly, not meaning that the action should not be performed properly outwardly, but rather the one who truly has the correct intention, the one who truly wants the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal, He will take the path to that. He will take the path to that. And the one who has a sincere, pure intention, then he will be guided. And he will, the one who really hopes for the mercy of Allah and his pleasure, then he will search for the avenues that lead to that. He will search for the avenues that lead to that. So what is how to is the heart. But likewise, the actions coming behind that. Likewise, the actions, they, they follow behind that. And the one who is truly sincere with Allah, Azza wa Jal, then he will also learn outwardly how to rectify his deeds. How to rectify his deeds. Likewise, it's been narrated from Sahel. Ibn Abdullah to study. Rahimahullah ta'ala, he says, Laysa ala nafsi shay'un ashaqqa ashaqqa min al-ikhlas ashaqqa min al-ikhlas There's nothing more hard and difficult upon the soul than sincerity. Than sincerity, al-ikhlas. Al-ikhlas. Li'annahu laysa laha fihi nasib. Because the soul has no portion whatsoever. Yani the one who is sincere, truly sincere, in his statements, in his actions, in his effort, in his giving, in his taking, in his love, in his hate. And the one who's sincere, he does it for the sake of Allah. The soul has no portion of that whatsoever. And he left his soul behind and he hoped only for the sake of Allah. So he's saying, because of this, this is the most difficult thing. This is the most difficult thing on the soul is to, is to, is to give up yani, uh, all, all of these actions and, have, and to hope for nothing in return. And need to hope for nothing in return from the people or from this worldly life. To do it for the sake of Allah and hope for the reward in the hereafter entirely. And this is something that is difficult, rather from the most difficult affairs. After this, likewise, it's been narrated from Yusuf ibn Hussein al-Razi. Rahimahullah, he says, A'azzu shay'in fi dunya al-ikhlas. The rarest thing, the rarest thing in this life is sincerity and impurity and intention. وَكَمْ أَجْتَهِدُ فِي إِسْخَاطِ الْرِيَاءِ عَنْ قَلْبِي وَكَأَنَّهُ يَنْبُتُ فِيهِ uh, وَكَأَنَّهُ uh, يَنْبُتُ فِيهِ عَلَى لَوْنٍ آخر. He said that, that uh, sincerity is the rarest thing in this life. And how many times have I do I strive to remove the riya from my heart? It's, it's the rarest thing. How many times have I, am I striving to remove, showing off, and wanting to be heard from my heart, and it's as if it will grow back in another form. It's as if it will grow back in another form, in another color. Meaning that, for example, maybe he will notice that he is showing off in prayer, and then he will strive against his soul and fight that. And then he will overcome himself by the permission of Allah, and he will stop showing off in prayer by the success from Allah Azza wa Jal. It won't stop there. Now it will come to the recitation of the Quran, or now it will come to seeking knowledge, or now, now it will, if he overcome the, the riya and the sum'ah and the prayer, now it will come to him whenever he's given charity. And then if he strives against it like this, and now he'll fight it in this manner, and then he'll overcome the issue here, and he can give charity for the sake of Allah. Now the riya will come back up. Like it's like a disease that grows in the heart. As soon as you, you get rid of it, it's like a weed. You get rid of it, it comes back up on the other side. It comes back up in another manner. It comes back up in another way. Clarifying that this is something that does not stop. It's a jihad. It's jihad. It's jihad until one meets Allah. وَعَبُدْ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ And worship your Lord until death comes to you. Like this Sufyan authority, rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentioned, he said, مَا عَلَجْتُ شَيْئًا أَشَدَّ عَلَيَّ مِنْ نِيَتِي That I have never dealt with anything more hard and difficult upon me than my intention. I never treated anything more difficult, more difficult than my own intention. Because it's always changing on me. 
it's always changing on me. Some of the salaf, they used to mention that he would sit down and narrate hadith. And he would have an intention of purity and seeking the pleasure of Allah. And during the hadith, it'll change. And then he'll have to fight that and he will have a new intention and he'll rectify that. And then during the, during the, and, 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 so it keeps happening over and over. He, so he say, I'll narrate one hadith and I'll have many intentions. I have many intentions because of how the, the riya keeps coming and coming and he has to fight it and fight it. So inshallah, there are rulings with regards to this and we'll discuss them in the, in the next class. هذا وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم